Tēnātātou katoa, good evening. Embattled Immigration Minister Michael Wood has told Parliament he's finally offloaded his airport shares on the very day an inquiry into his financial interests was announced. But as political editor Jenna Lynch reports, Wood wasn't the only minister under scrutiny today. Double, double, toil and trouble. Two ministers heads down in the naughty seats, both full of regret. It is a decision that I deeply regret. These are major errors on my part, and I deeply, deeply regret them. Three years of reminders of stalling, of procrastination. Michael Wood has finally sorted his shares. I have sold the shares, and I have also donated the proceeds of that sale uh, to charity. The minister lost his transport portfolio this week for failing to declare he held shares in Auckland. Airport. He was reminded no fewer than 12 times by the Cabinet Office to sell them, but says he lost track of the paperwork. I think, like everybody, I can't quite understand to what's happened here. In the space of 24 hours, Wood managed to get it done, selling his two shareholdings in Auckland Airport worth a total of $16,400. I have also followed up and corrected the Register of Pecuniary Interest going back uh, to 2017. Despite being asked outright by a newsroom journalist in writing within six days of his third warning from the Cabinet Office, Wood never added the shares to his public record of financial interests. Today, the Registrar of Pecuniary Interests launched an inquiry. Um, I think it's uh, appropriate and is a useful exercise to go through at the moment. And it was revealed the previous Prime Minister was aware of Wood's share affair. Clearly I would have liked to have that info a little bit earlier. Um, having said that, the responsibility here rests with Michael Wood. Have you let the Prime Minister down? Uh, yes, in this episode I have let the Prime Minister down, I have let my colleagues down, I have let myself down. The other let down, Jan Tanetti, forced to front up to Parliament's powerful Privileges Committee. I'll use my teacher voice. <laughs> Drilled for a whole hour in the hot seat of Parliament's court over why her staff sent emails to the Education Ministry requesting they delay the release of attendance data to coincide with a $74 million truancy announcement. I do set clear expectations around what is acceptable by my staff and this clearly, clearly overstepped the mark. And why she misled the House about it. I was unaware of any of these emails at the time. Asked how exactly she was unaware they'd done so. How can you be functioning as a minister of future respect? Because my focus was on the data itself, yeah. not the release of the data. That is what she has said, and I accept her at her word. I also accept her at her word that she didn't intend to mislead Parliament. Her staff told her immediately she'd misled the Parliament, but she didn't correct the record at the very first available opportunity as required. It was 14 parliamentary sitting days before she finally admitted she was wrong. I made a judgement not to correct my statement and then got on with my role as Minister. Minister, do you understand your responsibility to the House? Do you understand and take it seriously? Absolutely. And before the day was out, she was back on the correction buzz. I seek leave to correct an answer to oral question number 11 today. She got the date of the attendance data release wrong. Oh, well, Jenna, when are these ministerial messes going to end? Looks like no end in sight. Michael Wood won't be reinstated as Transport Minister until that inquiry comes back. Jan Tanetti is awaiting her fate from that Privileges Committee. Whether she will be held in contempt of Parliament, that's likely to take a couple of weeks. The Stuart Nash donor investigation is due back over the next couple of weeks as well, so it looks like bread and butter is off the menu for the foreseeable future. You have to feel for the Prime Minister a little bit here because these messes that he's mopping up... Most of them date back to the Ardern years, but he is starting to look like he's steering this rickety rookie ship. Jan Tanetti and Michael Wood's political crimes are unforced amateur errors. And Chris Hipkins, the question for him now is whether he can lay down the law with Labour, stop this series of stuff-ups, or whether his colleagues are going to force him to go down the captain of the good ship Numpty. Our political editor, Jenna Lynch, there live from Parliament. Tēnā koe.